three is to one. Let's get talking on the markets as well as on the fixed income space. Namneet Munod, CIO of SBI Mutual Fund, joins in to talk about that. Namneet, hi, good to see you in this after this uh, morning. Actually, uh, what is your take on the relief rally that we've seen in the bond markets as well as on the equity markets? Uh, do you think uh, that maybe fifty five hundred or maybe fifty four hundred could hold for the Nifty? Okay, so uh, first on the fixed income markets, uh, there has been a big rally today. Even yesterday, from the intraday low, market recovered quite a bit. In the morning, yields touched a, a level which we have only seen once in last ten years. And remember, when we saw ten-year bond at nine and a half percent in 2008, that time the growth was eight mm. percent, inflation was in double digit. And today, when growth is at five percent, core inflation is at two and a half percent, which potentially actually can touch zero percent in the next couple of months. And the bond yields have had gone way too high than what the fundamentals suggest. And fundamentally speaking, I mean, you should look at the growth inflation dynamics. Everything else creates more noise. Mm. So I, I think some of these RBI measures created an opportunity for investors to buy bonds at those levels, which otherwise wouldn't have uh, come. Mm. Uh, going forward, I think it will depend on on next couple of days and last several. Days, uh, you know, bond traders are in a pool where where the level of water, the temperature, the the uh, uh, current is is getting changed in an ad hoc manner, and they don't know what the next shock could be. But I think in next couple of days, if I read the RBI statement of yesterday, I, there seems to be some change in the stance. Probably realization that some of the measures taken have been uh, have not resulted in the desired uh, outcome that they would have thought. And, and probably the collateral damage that has been caused to the bond market has been uh, way too much. So I just hope that uh, uh, that that stance continues, and then the market finds its its uh, right space over the next couple of days. As far as equities are concerned, of course, this is a global trend. Uh, given the uh, tapering of the QE, so all of us benefited from the global liquidity. And if that liquidity uh, uh, tap is going to uh, you know uh, slow down, it's going to impact all emerging markets. We have been one of the the worst performers. Given the domestic uh, macro challenges, uh, but I, I think the valuations, at least a part of the market, uh, is, is, is showing a lot of promise. And in last 10 days, we are clearly seeing that there has been a move away from defensive, so-called defensive, mm -hmm. to some of the cyclical stocks. And it seems that uh, uh, market is getting a little more uh, optimistic. Of course, the headline uh, Sensex number may not uh, reflect that, but the underlying trend shows that probably our yeah, market is is probably seeing some some rays of hope. Okay. Well, uh, you're sounding almost optimistic, uh, Navneet. Uh, let me get one thing at a time. Uh, the bond yields is the rally over? I mean, 8.35, 8.3 to 8.4 is where things might settle down now. For the time being, yes. But going forward, we still believe that if you look at the growth inflation dynamics, they suggest lower rates. Mm. Of course, the uh, uh, we have got this complexity from the INR side, and given yeah. the uh, the volatility in INR and the pressure on INR, we don't know the what next measure from the RBI and the government. But once the dust settles on that part, and my take on QE tapering is that I think once the event is behind us, mm. probably uh, some of the emerging market currencies and the, and the other equity and bond markets may recover. And I think rupee can stabilize at at lower levels, and then in that case, there is still uh, expectations of probably the lower interest rates going forward. Yeah, we live in hope, uh, don't we? Uh, Navneet, let me come to the uh, equity markets. Oh, is there even a tactical buy in any of the banking stocks now, or do you think it was at best an intraday buy, and uh, those stocks are still prone to uh, macroeconomic uh, issues? Uh, the whole sector has got beaten down quite a bit. Of course, some for the right reasons. I mean, the concerns about the asset quality, uh, uh, the of course the RBI measures where the uh, funding has has moved up in an inverted yield curve environment. It's it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, from from the margins point of view, banks can get get impacted very badly. The uh, funding cost has moved up while on the given the growth slowdown and the overall economic moderation, uh, the pricing power on the lending side is going to be very limited. So it's, it's going to put pressure on the margins. Also, I think the markets got hugely nervous in terms of the losses that could be there in the bond portfolio. Of course, in terms of share accounting, RBI might say that the shift from AFS to STM, but mm. the fact is that banks who bought the bonds at at a much lower level, they, 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 uh, that portfolio would be bleeding today. Uh, having said that, as I mentioned, that I think they they got beaten down quite a bit, and that there is some potential for a bounce back. Mm. In which kind uh, would you prefer the private bankers? Or 
uh, or do you think there's value emerging in public sector banks? Uh, which sector are you favoring? So we, we have been overweight uh, uh, private sector banks for quite some time and that trade has, has uh, paid off quite well. Uh, we would be very selective uh, in, in the overall banking space as I mentioned that the concerns on the asset quality remains. Also you have to look at the uh, individual banks per se uh, rather than taking an overall broader call. Mm -hmm. Navneet, uh, there were some views coming in from the economist community earlier in the day that maybe the rupee could touch 70 possibly in a month. Would you subscribe to that? So uh, to me, I mean, this is this is a movie that I saw in 2007 where nobody could predict that rupee can go above 40. The, the predictions were anywhere between 32 to 40. And given the copious flows that we had that time and the sentiments in favor of emerging markets in general and India in particular, uh, we, we, we have I think that the street was completely unipolar in its view. Mm -hmm. I've never seen after that another point which, which is there today where everybody thinks that rupee can only depreciate. Uh, of course the, the uh, flows are against us as well as the sentiments. But these things can change dramatically. I think if the, and then we have seen that what happened to Euro and then just one statement from Draghi where you know we'll do whatever it takes or let's say the same thing that US Fed did. I think in the next couple of days if, if policy makers remain on, on, on a right path, we may see a change in that uh, direction in sentiments. I know that people are uh, extremely bearish on rupee for the activity which is there in the NDF market if you read that uh, and then and even otherwise talking to bankers, corporates, economists, everybody, I mean people are way too bearish. To me I think the consensus is, is turning too unipolar and uh, I, I won't be surprised I mean if I see the direction changing in the next couple of weeks. Mm. Okay, uh, finally, uh, Navneet, what about the market itself? Uh, are you seeing a bottom uh, uh, at uh, 5,200 as some people are saying, some people seeing it even lower or do you think that uh, what we have now scaled is the bottom? Uh, what is the sense you are getting in terms of uh, uh, you know, earnings growth and valuations for this market? So index is a bit of a misnomer because uh, till few days back we saw that there were a couple of stocks particularly in the uh, consumer IT and the pharma space that were keeping the index relatively higher but in this fall that we have seen from 5700 to 5400 we have seen that most of the cyclicals have done well while those stocks that I just mentioned in the defensive uh, uh, category that, that you can put uh, they have not done so well. So it is difficult to predict. I mean if you see foreigners selling because they are more overweight in these kind of names probably you might see index at lower level but I think you have to uh, differentiate uh, uh, more at, at, at the stock level and the sector level and I think some of the beaten down sectors and the stocks might do well going forward. Broadly speaking, I think from here on, uh, most of the macro challenges that we have seen, uh, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic on the current account side. I think probably it can uh, decline substantially. Uh, the flows can actually reverse. I think once that QE thing is, is behind us in September when US Fed says that yes, we are going to taper, I, I think the, it, it's like buying on rumor and selling on news. I think after that, I see a recovery in overall emerging markets, but even they, they will be more differentiated. So I think putting them all in one basket may not be right, but I think markets like India may see flows coming back. At this level of rupee, if you look at the Nifty in dollar terms, I think it's become quite cheap. Indian markets in terms of valuations, and if you look at some of the other things like market cap to GDP or M3 to GDP and then some of those measures, India looks quite attractive from a global market, uh, from, from a global investor's perspective. So I think flows both in debt and equity markets may turn positive. I think just a matter of time and sentiments can turn positive. All right, Namdi, 